Today we're going to be digging back into the bodywork and working on the front panel alignment issues that I've had. Hi everyone and welcome to the channel about kick cars and other car topics. If you like what you see, please subscribe and hit the notification buttons below and share with others on social media. So a long time ago, I uh, kind of bailed on some uh, body work because the front panels were just not lining up at all. And it was off enough to where I was like scratching my head and I didn't know what to do. And there's a lot of things that have happened in the world and including you know, the pandemic, uh, companies shutting down temporarily, companies going out of business, uh, social distancing, all these different things. And that's kind of right when I was in the middle of my panel issues. And so all my tech support disappeared from Factory 5 because they uh, were shut down by their, by their governor, by the state. And, uh, you know, nobody was willing to come over and help me out with anything. Uh, and, you know, People also have other jobs and lives and stuff like that, so they weren't able to come over. And so you started adding all that stuff up, and I was kind of just sitting here, like twiddling my thumbs and not able to move forward with anything. Um, and some of my friends that I'm able to call on and do stuff, they didn't actually install the front panels on their car. They have an open engine roadster, so um, no help there because they didn't go through the process. Um, so, and one thing I also kind of want to throw out there is. There's times in videos, like I know like the video where I was putting the hard top on and I was like, well, I'm having some alignment issues. It's probably this, but you know what? I'm just going to bail right now because in one week, my buddy, you know, Greg's going to come over and we're just going to bust out all this stuff in one day and it's no big deal. Why screw it up now when I got, you know, somebody's got my back in a few days. Well, that day never came. And so <laughs> there's a lot of times where you might see me bail on something and it's under the assumption that I got help coming down the pike in a few days or whatever. And just with what's going on in the world, that just hasn't happened. And so I've had to kind of finally get some consulting here and there and then just dig in on my own. And um, so, you know, hopefully that gives you an idea of why sometimes I bail on something. Um, when I could just keep for going forward. And, and, and in the future, I have gone forward on stuff and it hasn't been that big of a deal. But being my first time doing it, it's, it's just is what it is. And sometimes you wanna rely uh, on people that have done it before and they're just not available. And so uh, that's kind of this world right now has kind of changed. So, so in any case, um, Factory 5 is just coming back online. Um, so I'm able to get tech support again. And because of that, you know, I've actually been in discussions with uh, people like Tony and even Dave Smith, the owner of the company, uh, to kind of just, you know, get back in. Because at that point, when I was reaching out, I saw that they were doing some Facebook videos and stuff. But I know other people like my normal, you know, rep that I deal with on a daily basis to get parts or like, hey, when's this coming out or what's going on? Uh, these people were either working from home or they were temporarily laid off or, you know, it was just a weird situation. And so I started sending emails to like, well, I know Dave's in the office every day, the owner of the company. Let's see if, you know, who's listening, you know? And so, uh, uh, so that actually turned out good for me. And uh, we're kind of getting back online and we're doing some tech support stuff. And so we're gonna dig in, test some panels specifically uh, to answer what Factory 5 needs from me to see what's going on and then uh, kind of go from there. So let's hop to it. Okay, so the first thing I need to do they want me to actually take the valance, which is the bottom piece of the front coming under the grill, if you will, and all the way back to the body. And they want me to bolt that onto the body. What that will do is that will give a resting place or a final resting place where that back end is. And then I can bring up the front and actually see where it's sitting, how far off it is, uh, make sure my grill's all the way back, stuff like that. So that's the first thing I'm gonna be doing. Now, this is a little bit of a pain in the butt because I can't really get my hands in behind there. So temporarily what I'm going to be doing is using my Clecos to hold this in place and just kind of see where it's going.
So now it's time to put on the grill. And what's really weird is when I set this grill up originally and got it all dialed in, I purposely locked it down and all I did was remove it from the car, didn't move anything in between, and then I was just gonna bolt it back on the car and it should be in the same exact spot that it should have been originally. And for some reason, that is not true. It's nowhere even near where it used to be, which doesn't make sense to me at all. I have no clue what's going on. So I'm gonna to have to now readjust everything and try to get it to dial in. Now that I have everything readjusted, it's time for me to actually take the hood and start ripping off everything that's below the belt line. In fact, I'm even nudging into the belt line a little bit and just kind of ripping off that whole edge. And that's partly why the hood was kind of squeezing against the body and then it would push forward. So every time I cut a little bit off the front, it kept inching forward and inching forward because it was squeezing itself out. So I'm gonna rip off that belt, not the belt line itself, but right below the belt line and uh, let's see what happens when we go from there. Due to the reflections, I wasn't able to see anything. So now I'm flipping it over and it's a lot easier for me to see what's going on. Then also I got a box and this way I could put the hood on the box in a vertical position and it will allow me to make a vertical cut which is easier for me to see and do um, instead of doing it horizontally and sideways that's you know tilting over and kneeling and being right in the middle of the dust and all that not cool. So vertically actually works for me and I'm just gonna you know tear off each side and use the grinding wheel which I'm now using for all my straight cuts which works phenomenal and uh, I'm just gonna bust it out.
And so what the official finding is, is the valance is actually a good inch or so short. Um, it seems like it's pretty close when it comes to the alignments of the uh, A-frames and stuff like that. Originally I was thinking I needed an inch between the body and the valance. However, then I soon realized that that means the gaps where the, um, uh, the A-frame comes through would be off between the valance and also the side panels because they both have gaps and they're supposed to align with each other. So because of that, it was like, okay, I can't do it that way. So the best thing that we're gonna have to do is extend the front end of the valance and uh, we'll see where we go from here. But until next time, have a great day.